Fint, welcome to Dublin. Um, the, you're, you're in Dublin for the Data Summit and, you know, mainly the purpose of the Data Summit really is because in Europe we're going to have GDPR in about a year's time. Um, but when you think of privacy, I mean, when, when you guys were building the internet, first of all, did, was privacy something you thought about? Not so much, really. Uh, remember that we were a bunch of academics, mostly engineers, and our interest at this time, we're now talking in the 1973 to 78 period, was to get it to work at all. And, and you know, we were uh, all about sharing information anyway. It wasn't a personal network, it was a network that was helping the Defense Department in particular uh, support research in computer science, and then later the National Science Foundation supporting research in all sciences. So it wasn't uh, really a, a major factor in our thinking at the early stages. Of course, that's changed a great deal now that the general public has access to the network. Now, when I think about it, one of the things you mentioned there when in our briefing there was the, um, the milestone the internet reached three and a half billion people. And I think you mentioned you were talking to uh, Eric Schmidt, who said to you, do, well, you're staying on because you've got another three and a half billion people to connect. Exactly. How do you think about where you're at today and the challenges ahead? Um, when you think about it, um, we're now entering, we're in 4G in terms of mobile, for example, we're entering 5G, um, thousands of people being connected every single day. How, how do you feel about where we've gotten to and where we're going to? So, uh, first of all, in terms of penetration, uh, although from my point of view, this has taken 40 years, the, the internet was not actually turned on until 1983, so to be fair about this, and it wasn't publicly available until 1989, so in terms of, of uh, access by the general public, we should sort of measure from that period of time. Uh, I think that uh, the uh, telecommunications trends are actually in our favor. The arrival of higher speed radio and certainly the presence of smartphones like the iPhone that was uh, introduced in 2007, literally just 10 years ago, which is hard to believe considering how dependent we are on smartphones now. But those, those trends, plus trends in the reduction of cost of equipment and, uh, and telecom services, uh, is making this more and more affordable to a broader uh, range of uh, consumers. And that allows for improved penetration over time. So I think perhaps by the end of this decade, we might uh, see uh, internet access in one form or another available to perhaps even 70% or more of the world's population. And so I'm very happy about that. Uh, the thing which that introduces, of course, is an increased uh, amount of content that can come from the people who are part of the net. I mean, we, we get to learn from each other. But at the same time, uh, there are um, issues that the GDPR and others, uh, other uh, concerns will uh, highlight, and that's the kind of content that shows up on the net which is not intended for your benefit, whether it's malware or phishing attacks or misinformation or all the other things that we see, bullying. That's the general population at work, and it's, it is, in fact, the reason why we still read Shakespeare, because 400 years later, Human motivations haven't changed a bit. You know, Shakespeare got it all, and we're still discovering that. So we have work to do to preserve this incredibly rich, powerful, and creative, innovative environment, this, this vast treasure of knowledge, um, and defend against some of the abuses that show up because the medium is so open. And that its benefit has been that it's so open, and the challenge is it's so open. Well, the final question to you really is, uh, We've gone from literally 10 years ago where, as you mentioned, the iPhone came along to a point now where we're talking about artificial intelligence, robots, automation. Uh, people are talking actively about robots stealing our jobs in the future. How do you think about that acceleration of technology and do you really think that technology is a foe rather than a friend? So we have, of course, had experience with industrial revolutions, several of them, and however you count, some people think this is the fourth industrial revolution. And always jobs get destroyed because things got automated or there was a different way of making something. Uh, but new jobs came along, either making the equipment or servicing the equipment or selling the products that came out or doing other kinds of services. So I don't think that it will be different in this case. However, it's very important to recognize that the people whose jobs may have uh, evaporated as a result of either AI or just automation in general may not be able to be prepared to do the new jobs unless they get retraining. And so we really need to build this notion of learning over a course of a career into our thinking. And that's going to happen partly because people are going to live longer anyway, I hope. I mean, that's the trend. 
which means they have longer working careers, which means that technology will be changing for an even longer period of time and is forcing all of us to learn something new in order to be relevant. So this notion of education over a period of time will certainly have to become part of our normal society.